Rational numbers are numbers which can be written as fractions. In symbols we would write that rational numbers are numbers which look like a over b, where a and b are integers, and that's the element symbol that you've already learned. a and b are elements of the integers. And then we also say that b cannot be zero. Right, so if we had a fraction with the denominator of zero, that number would not be a real number. So we just want to consider fractions that are real numbers. Um, some examples would be, of course, things like two-thirds or negative one-eighths. And then even things like five, because five could be written as five over one. Um, zero is a rational number, because zero could be written as zero over and then you can take your pick, um, 0 over anything would be equal to 0. So I could make this, you know, a 15 or something like that. So you can see um, fractions can be positive or negative, and all of these would be considered uh, rational numbers. Um, we also talk about decimals, for example, 0.5, uh, because we know that 0.5 can be rewritten as 1 half. Um, things like 0.333 repeating. That's a rational number because that is the decimal that we use to represent one-third. In this video, we want to um, talk about uh, the identity property of multiplication again um, and use that to work with fractions or rational numbers. So just a quick review, the identity property tells us that we can multiply any number, um, any, even a fraction, by the number 1 and the, uh, the value of that number does not change. Okay, so 4 fifths times 1 would still be 4 fifths. And I can choose to multiply by 1 in really any way that I choose. So I could have easily said um, 4 fifths times 3 over 3, and because 3 over 3 is still the same thing as 1, then this fraction doesn't change. That's still 4 fifths. Alright, so let's use the identity property to simplify fractions. Um, another, uh, your, your book will also call this the, um, I think it's the fundamental property of rational numbers. Uh, but really this is just the identity property of multiplication. It's not a new property. So notice when you go to simplify a fraction, um, a lot of times we will just um, kind of cancel um, cancel things out. So I might say, okay, well, I know 21 can be divided by 3, and that's 7. 36 can be divided by 3, and that's 12. So this fraction simplified is 7 twelfths. And that is true. Uh, but we did skip a couple steps there. So it's the uh, the identity property that justifies why we're allowed to just cancel numbers out like that and reduce the fraction. So let's write out the steps that we skipped. Um, what we're really saying here is that 21 is the same thing as 7 times 3. And that 36 is the same thing as 12 times 3. And that equals 7 twelfths times 3 over 3. So I can split that up into two fractions. And then just notice that 3 over 3 is the same thing as 1. And then here's the part where we have the identity property. And let's see. I'm going to circle this. Right, the identity property tells us that 7 twelfths times 1 um, is equal to 7 twelfths. All right, so it's the identity property that allows us to um, kind of cancel those 3's because we know that that's uh, just equivalent to 1 and that multiplying by 1 does not change the value of the fraction. Here's another example. Um, this still does work for negative fractions. Okay, so if we rewrite this fraction, look for what, what number you would normally uh, cancel from the numerator and the denominator. So I would be looking for something that both of these numbers are divisible by. 
and notice that negative 9 and 24 uh, could both be divided by 3. So I can rewrite the negative 9 as negative 3 times 3. And then I know that 24 is equal to 8 times 3. Okay, and then that would equal negative 3 eighths times 3 thirds. Then that 3 thirds is just a different way of writing 1. And then here's the part where we apply the identity property to say that negative 3 eighths times 1 is the same thing as negative 3 eighths. Okay? Um, and this fraction is fully reduced. And we know that because there is uh, no other number that, that negative 3 and 8 can both be divided by. So we would say that this fraction is reduced or simplified or in lowest terms. Another use of the identity property is to make division problems easier. Um, if you looked at the problem 81 divided by 27, you might not know um, without uh, using a calculator what that answer is without doing some work. Um, but you can use the identity property to make this a simpler problem and be able to do this in your head. Um, so when we write a division sign, that's really just another way of writing um, or, or actually this, this fraction bar um, is another way of writing a division problem. So 81 divided by 27 is really the same thing as 81 over 27. And then we can apply that same identity property just to divide each of these numbers um, by a common factor. Right, so I know 81, um, I know that that's 9 times 9, and I know that 27 is 9 times 3. All right, so this is really 9 over 9 times 9 over 3, and then this 9 ninths is equal to 1. Okay, and then the identity property tells me that 1 times 9 thirds equals 9 thirds. All right, so since 81 over 27 equals 9 thirds, which we just showed, um, I can find the answer to this problem, 9 thirds. I know that that's 3. And therefore, since the fractions are the same, that must be the answer to my original problem as well. So 81 divided by 27 is equal to 3. Here's another example, 144 divided by 36. You probably don't have this one memorized. But I can rewrite this as a fraction. And I know that um, 144, I know that that's 12 times 12, and that 36 is equal to 3 times 12. All right. Then the identity property allows me to uh, rewrite this. Okay, 12 twelfths is 1. And then the identity property tells me that that's equivalent to 12 thirds, and I know that 12 divided by 3 equals 4. So the answer to my original problem is 4. Okay. What about a long division problem, something like 314 divided by 2.8? Uh, what's the process that you already know for how to um, do this using long division. All right, so you may have been taught that when you have a long division problem like this, um, you're supposed to move the decimal point so that the number that you're dividing by doesn't contain a decimal. And then we also do the same thing in the um, on that the larger number, 314, as well. So we would rewrite this problem as 28 being divided into 3, 1, 4, okay, and then we have a decimal here that we moved over, okay, so 3,140. So one question would be, uh, why are these two problems the same? And it kind of makes sense, you know, we moved a decimal on this number, the first one, and we moved it on the second, so it kind of makes sense that they're the same um, but the, the answer is, again, 
the same property, the identity property of multiplication. So if you write out this division problem, the original one, this is really 314 being divided by 2.8. All right, and uh, what is it that we've done when we've moved the decimal to the right? All right. So um, to, mul to move a decimal to the right, what we're actually doing is multiplying by 10. All right. And I also moved the decimal to the right on my 314. So I also multiplied that number by 10. All right. And that equals 3140 over 28. All right. Well, notice all I did was multiply by 10 over 10, all right, which equals 1. All right. So I'm just using the identity property here to say that I'm allowed to multiply a number by 1, and I just so happen to choose 10 over 10 in order to make that work. Okay, here's one more example. The division problem 0.7 being divided into 14.6. I can rewrite this using the fraction bar. This is 14.6 being divided by 0.7. The identity property tells me that the value will be the same if I multiply this by 1. And I can choose to multiply by 1 in whatever form I like. So I'm going to choose 10 over 10. All right, And 14.6 times 10 will be 146. And 0.7 times 10 will be 7. And then if I rewrite this as a division problem, this is 146, as a long division problem, 146 divided by 7. All right. So what I've done is I've started with this expression, my original division problem, and then all of these equal signs tell me that by the time I get to the end, right, this problem is the exact same thing. All right, so just two different ways of writing the same problem and we use the identity property of multiplication to show that that is true.